Alright guys, and welcome back to another Max Deck Tech. Today we're going over a, an upgraded precon. Uh, this is the Night Tribal precon from March of the Machines. Uh, so we're sticking with the the face commander for it, which is Sabar Jabari of Zalfir. Uh, they have Eminence, so whenever you attack with a knight, uh, if they're in the command zone or in the field, you get to draw a card, discard a card. Um, if this commander happens to punch someone in the face, which with flying, a pretty decent chance of getting through at least one opponent, you get to cheat a knight from your graveyard back onto the battlefield. Uh, which is really what we're trying to do, right? That's like the whole point of the game. That's the whole, like, the two abilities obviously work really well. I'm gonna draw a card, discard a knight, hit you in the face, cheat that knight back out. So how are we doing this? Well, we're going to go with a lot of Night Tribal synergies. Uh, we're already drawing cards, so we're going to try and like push the card draw even further. Um, and then, you know, from there, we're really just like trying to do this as quick as possible. We're a very like aggressive deck. We're trying to pump out knights quickly, take out as many opponents as quickly as possible. Sound like a plan? Sounds like a plan to me. Let's get going over uh, these Night Tribal synergies, shall we? Starting off, we have the Acclaimed Contender. Uh, they're gonna let us draw a card effectively for having another knight. Granted, that card draws from the top five. It doesn't have to specifically be another knight, uh, but it's allowed to be. We do have a couple auras and enchantments and like whatnot amongst the rest of the deck, but we're really here looking for more knights to fuel the, you know, draw knight, discard knight, cheat knight out synergy we're going for. You know what I mean? After our contender, we have Aurel, Knight of Wind Grace. Uh, so they're, they're great. They're going to create us some knights. And once we have a lot of knights out, most of our knights, or maybe not most, but enough of them have vigilance that we can attack. And then in main phase two, right, we can play, pay a black and uh, tap down a bunch of them to destroy a creature. So it's both good knight synergy in terms of being a knight itself, creating more knights, and its removal, right? We're looking for that value. Following them up, we have Alenda and Azor. Uh, so this is one of those legendary pairings you see. Uh, this was also like nice and like in the deck from the start. Uh, but they're gonna let us go ahead and draw some cards. A little bit expensive, you know, granted. We're paying 3 plus X to draw X cards, but still pretty good. And then our end step, right, we could pay 4 lives to create, you guessed it, a bunch of knights. These knights are vampire knights, which is going to give us lifelink, which will mitigate the fact that we paid 4 life to do the effect. One Alenda was good, but two Alendas are better. So Alenda the Dusk Rose is going to get a little bit bigger every time a creature dies, and with Alenda and Azor, we do have some repeatable removal on the field. And when they die, they're gonna go ahead and create us those, uh, those vampire tokens. So not quite vampire knights, but, you know, we have repeatable removal. She's gonna get big, she's lifelinky. I think she's worth having in here. Exsanguinator Cavalry, right? So, Menace, Menace is always good. A little bit of lifelink, not gonna send out of that. Whenever one of our knights deals damage to a player, they get bigger and we get to create blood tokens. Blood tokens, if you don't, you know, recall, you don't play with them a lot, they make you pay one and then tap and sack them to draw a card and discard a card. Right, this is card selection, if nothing else. But again, with our commander, we're looking to discard our knights. So this really fuels that really well. Following up our Bloody Knight, we have the Herald of Hoofbeats. They have horsemanship and they give all of our other knights horsemanship. Now horsemanship, for those who aren't familiar with it, you don't see it a whole lot these days. If a creature has horsemanship, it cannot be blocked except by other creatures with horsemanship. So this effectively makes our entire board unblockable. And you could imagine, with us, like, swarming the field with knights for cheap, you know, a whole board that's unblockable can very easily take someone out. 
An Exemplar is another fantastic knight. She gives all of our other knights plus one, plus one rights, so she's a knight lord. And more importantly, in my opinion, she gives them all indestructible. This is going to protect your board from board wipes. It's actually going to let you play board wipes on your turn if she's already out. The board wipe would take out her, but the rest of your knights will be spared. Following up our indestructible pal, we have the Knight Errant of Eos. Uh, they have Convoke, so we can get them out for as cheap as one white mana, which is often what we're looking to do. Uh, because they have Convoke, and that'll let us look at the top six cards, and we can choose up to two creatures among them, obviously knights, that have mana value of X or less, where X is the number of creatures that Convoke them. Right, so this is effectively a draw two knights from the top six cards of your deck that costs four or less, which covers a fair bit of our knights. There's a couple, obviously, that are a little too expensive for it, but Knight Errant of Eos is great. Speaking of knights that are a little too expensive for that ability to grab them, the Lockthwain Lancer. He's another Manache boy. Uh, whenever a non-token knight I control dies, uh, each opponent will lose a life and I'll draw a card. Right, we're doing a little bit of ping damage. The ping damage could go a long way just over time. But more importantly, we're getting that card draw. Right, we want to dig through the deck. We want to have more knights that we can then choose to cheat out using our commander. Here we have yet another knight lord. It's Marshal of Zalfir. They also let us tap down creatures. Uh, so if your opponent has, like, some big old beefy boy, you know, you have the option of tapping it down to just be like, look, nothing else you have on your field matters, but that's a problem. You could use it, you know, offensively to just be like, cool, that's not going to be a blocker, or you could use it defensively and tap it down before they go to combat. Very versatile, and that's what we look for in our deck building process. Silverwing Squadron's up next. Their power and toughness is equal to the number of creatures we control. With, with this swarmy deck, we're definitely gonna, you know, have a fair bit of power for them right away. And when they attack, they're gonna create more knights. Which is fantastic, right? We're gonna create one for each opponent, so early on we're gonna create three as the game goes on. The ability does get a little weaker, but... They're also a flying creature, right? So we have a lot of evasion there. We're gonna go in, punch face, you know, worry about everything else later. Yet again, we have a Lord. Uh, in this one, it's the form of the Valiant Knight. Uh, so they do two things. One, they passively lord up all of our knights, which we like. And maybe more importantly, they make it so our knights gain double strike until end of turn. Again, this could be offensive or defensive. Uh, the best part about it is the fact that we really don't have to tap it down to do it. Uh, so, you know, if your your opponent leaves themselves open, you know, pay five mana, run in and punch them in the face as hard as you can. You can't catch me. I'm the knight bread man. We've already talked a lot about card draw, and we're going to have some more card draw things coming up that aren't specifically Knight Tribal, but we should reward ourselves for it, right? It's not enough that we're getting value from card draw by itself. We want to, like, pump up all of our dudes for doing it. So with Voldean Wave Rider, uh, not Rider, Voldalian Wave Knight, whenever we draw a card, we're going to put a plus one, plus one on each other Merfolk and or Knight we control. So this is going to include our draw step. Uh, every time we attack with a knight, you know, we're getting another draw. Plus we have a lot of other effects that are just letting us draw cards, and it's for each card we draw this is going to happen. Because it's not whenever you draw one or more cards, it's whenever you draw a card, right? So this thing has potential for big value for our entire field. And the last of our creature-based Knight Tribal Synergy, we have Xerix Strobe Knight. They're flying 2-2, two, two, right? So already pretty evasive. And the fact that they're vigilant is fantastic because we can tap them to create a knight. There is a little bit of a caveat in the fact that we need to cast two spells in a single turn to get them to be able to use that ability, but... 
two spells isn't all that difficult. You know, with the amount of cards we're drawing, we're bound to start seeing and holding on to, really, some low-cost cards. And again, it'd be a little difficult to do it on our opponent's turn, right? We need to cast effectively two instants in order to pull it off the opponent's turn just to create, like, a blocker. But, you know, anything's possible. You know, keep your mind open to the possibilities. Following that up, we have the Conjurer's Mantle. Right, we're going to give some Vigilance to a creature, which is always nice. We could use them both offensively and defensively as a result. And whenever they attack, we get to look at the top six cards, reveal one that shares a creature type with it. So, again, a knight. And put it in our hands, let's go to the bottom in a random order. Uh, so it doesn't count as card draw, which is like a little, little disappointing. But, we're still getting that card selection. It's effectively draw as far as the... The desire to just to have more knights in hand to discard the cheat out, right? We have our Sigiled Sword of Valeran. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and give a little bit of power, a little bit of vigilance, and if something wasn't a knight, like maybe the humans we created with our, um, our worthy knight, they become a knight. Uh, if not, we're not really that concerned about that part, but what we are concerned about is with whenever the creature attacks, we get to create a 2-2 white knight with vigilance that's attacking. Right, we are swarming this field. There are just so many knights, our opponents won't know what to do. Along up our lovely sword, we have a banner. You know, we're knights, we need to have bannermen. Uh, so whatever answers, we're obviously choosing knights. This now becomes a, you know, an anthem for our knights, giving them a little plus one, plus one. And whenever we cast a knight, which is all of our creatures, we get to draw a card. So we're furthering that card draw synergy. Following that up, we have the invasion of Bellinum. Uh, so it's going to create a knight first when it ETBs. And should we manage to destroy it, should we manage to destroy it, we get a Bellinan War Anthem, which will boost all of our creatures, not just our knights. So that's right, even those lowly 1-1 humans can get a little bit of, little bit of boost. We're not done with the battles yet, though. We also have Invasion of New Capenna. Uh, when ETBs, we could sack a creature. We have a lot of tokens that we're generating, and like, while we don't really generally want to give up our creatures, uh, we can also give up like the blood tokens, um, you know, the humans we make, anything of that nature. And then we get to exile an artifact or creature that our opponent controls. So a little bit of removal, but the the battle is really not here for that. It's here for its transformation. Right, which gives us the Holy Frazzle Cannon. Uh, so it's super cheap to equip it one, and whenever the equipped creature attacks, you get to put a plus one plus one counter on that creature for each other creature you control that shares a creature type with it. Which means you could move this Holy Frazzle Cannon around from turn to turn and beef up a lot of boys. Right, we're all getting big, it's all happening very quickly. The last little bit of Knight Tribal Synergy we have here is Knight's Charge, so whenever a Knight we control attacks, each opponent will lose a life and will gain a life. Uh, which is fantastic, right? We're, we're looking to attack with a bunch of Vigilant Creatures anyways, and it's hitting each opponent, right? So you really only need to have one opponent who doesn't have creatures up to defend in order to really take advantage of this first effect. Now, we also have the second effect. It does cost 8 to activate, right? Not not trying to downplay that, but it will allow us, where we board wiped and we didn't manage to protect ourselves in some way, to just, you know, grab our entire graveyard of knights, slap them all back on the field. Alright, enough about Knight Tribal. Let's get into more card draw. Starting us off, we have the Falmire Knight, who also has a little bit of a little profane insight. Uh, so we can send this bad boy off on an adventure. 
will draw a card and lose a life. And I don't know about you, but I'm pretty much always willing to pay one life to draw one card. I'm going to go ahead and count Knights of the Black Rose among this, uh, because they give us the Monarch. And when we become the Monarch, we're going to start drawing at our end step. So we're basically guaranteed at least one card draw out of it. And then from that point on, obviously, we're looking to defend ourselves and, like, maintain use of the Monarch. And it has a little bit of a built-in deterrent, right? If an opponent would take the Monarch from us, they're going to lose two life and we're going to gain two life. So it's a little bit of damage mitigation, a little bit of damage thrown at somebody else. Is that too damage enough to say, like, oh, no one's ever going to try and take it? Absolutely not, right? Monarch is powerful, it's extra card draw every turn, someone's gonna come for it, but I'm pretty confident we can get it back. Following up our Black Rose, we have a uh, Liliana's Standard Bearer. Uh, so when it ETBs, we're gonna uh, draw X cards, lose X life, where X is the number of creatures that died from our control this turn. Important that it doesn't say non-token, and also important, it has flash, right? So if we think our opponents are going to board wipe, we hold up three mana, they board wipe, we slam out the the standard bear here, and just draw like ten cards. I think I said we lose life, but we actually don't. That's correct. Uh, so I misspoke, but it's okay. These things happen. We're all human. Or are we? You know why I thought we were taking damage? Because Midnight Reaper was on my mind, and he does say non-token creature. Uh, so whenever a non-token creature dies, Midnight Reaper will deal one to us, we'll draw a card. And again, I'm willing to pay one life, almost always, to draw a card. That's a good trade for me. Following up our creature-based draw, we have a little bit of spell slingy draw stuff in the form of Distant Melody. Uh, so obviously we're choosing knights, we're going to draw, you know, again, just a boatload of cards for the mere cost of four mana. Almost always worth it. It's a good time. We have Painful Truths. Uh, so we're obviously aiming to spend the three different colors in our deck to cast this. That way we're going to draw three, lose three. But even if we only draw one, lose one, draw two, lose two... Still pretty decent, but obviously, like I said, we're, we're aiming to draw three, lose three. We got read the bones, so we're going to scry two, a little bit of card selection, draw two, and then lose two. Uh, so the scry two is pretty powerful, obviously, like, it gives us that selection. It's like, do we want to draw these two cards now, or can we save them for later? Uh, so it's, it's a little flexible, a little situational, and that's what we're looking for. Render Inert is one of the newer cards, and it works really well with the two battles that we've already shown you, right? We're going to remove up to five counters from a target and then draw a card. But it's still a little flexible, right? If a creature our opponent has has like a bunch of counters on it, uh, be they plus one, plus one, um, be they loyalty counters on the Planeswalker, like I said, um, Simic Ascendancy even, right? Simic Ascendancy has a bunch of Simic counters on it. It's like, cool, we're going to remove five of those. And then, guess what? We're also drawing a card. So, Render and Earth, pretty good. Pull from Tomorrow is a nice instant speed draw spell. We get to choose how much we want to put into it. We are going to discard a card after it resolves. But, again, we don't mind discarding knights because we're going to cheat them out with our commander. Here's some more repeatable card draw, though, in the form of Chivalric Alliance. Uh, so whenever we attack with at least two creatures, we're going to draw a card. And, furthering the strategy of putting knights in our grave to get cheated out, we get paid two, discard a card, off in a knight, and then go ahead and create a white and blue knight with vigilance. And then, obviously, like I've you know alluded to, our commander punches someone in the face with his evasive flying, and we cheat them right back out. A little on the slower side initially, but Monk Class is going to reduce the cost for our second spell each turn. It'll let us bounce a thing, which, like, you know, for bouncing someone's token, it just sort of fizzles. 
Uh, even if we're bouncing just like an expensive creature, they're going to have to repay to cast it out. But the, the card draw aspect of it is really in the bottom. Right, so once we get it up to level 3, it's beginning of our upkeep. We get to exit the top card of our library. And we can cast that card as long as we've already cast another spell this turn. So again, we're trying to, you know, cast a couple different spells in a turn. We're kind of trying to swarm and, like, finish quickly. And this is just like a little little bit of pseudo draw, right? It's not quite draw, we're exiting the top card instead of drawing it, so like our draw triggers aren't gonna go off, but it's effectively draw. Then last, but certainly not least, Teferi's Ageless Insight. If we draw a card except for the first one we draw in each of our draw steps, we're gonna draw two cards instead. We have so many draw abilities throughout the deck, both both in the form of, you know, our creature-based draw, our instant sorceries, a little bit of enchantments, and even a couple artifacts that trigger for us to draw cards. We're just gonna, like, really dig through that deck faster than our opponents, and hopefully finish them off real quick. We're hoping to hit quick, but we also know our opponents may may not be thrilled with us doing this, right? They're going to put up some roadblocks, and we need to get around them. So what do we need? Removal. So the Aether Sworn Adjudicator can destroy creatures or enchantments and can untap itself, right? Now, granted, we would need to have nine open mana in order to destroy two things in a single turn, but... You know, we could also attack and then pay three to untap them just to use them as a blocker. A nice, like, little combat trick. But they're really here for the removal. We have another adventurous knight here in the form of Murderous Rider. And they're swift end, right? We're going to destroy a creature or planeswalker. We're going to lose two life to do it. But that's fine because they have lifelink and they're going to just, like, pay for themselves. And when they die... They don't actually die, right? They go to the bottom of our library. We're going to reuse them. Speaking of reusable destruction, it's a little expensive at 7 life, but we do get to destroy a target non-land permanent. It is at sorcery speed, unfortunately, but they are vigilant. They do have lifelink. And we have a fair bit of life flanking, just like sort of like life gaining effects overall in the deck. So I think that we could afford to pay the seven a few times over and be fine with it. Those are all a little targeted. Let's go ahead and move on to a couple of field wipes. We're not going to run a crazy amount of them because, again, we are the ones who are trying to swarm. But it's nice to have them just in case we find ourselves in a bit of a bind. And Fell the Mighty is actually pretty great in the sense that we get to choose a creature and it's like, hey, are you stronger than this one? Cool. Get rid of the rest. We, of course, have a Time Wipe, so we can bounce a creature back to our hand that we want to save and then wipe the field, probably recast that creature. If we're looking at Board Wipe and, you know... It's the best play, but we'll lose our commander. This is like a nice little trick to get around the commander tax. We have a D spark. Nice way to exile a permanent, right? Go into the grave. Some things want that. Exile? Nah. They do have to be men of AO4 or greater, but this is going to get rid of like those true threats. On the exile pathway, we have, well, you guessed it, path to exile. Does let them ramp a little bit, but instant speed removal, you know, get get that shit out of here. You guessed it, more removal in the form of Swords to Plowshares. Just like a nice sort of one-off. Yeah, they're going to gain some life, but the amount of life they gain compared to how much we could deal in a single turn kind of makes it a moot point. Now, obviously, our opponents are going to have some removal as well. We need to have at least a few ways around it, you know, that aren't just our indestructible knight 
combo where we're like, yeah, all of our other knights are indestructible, we can get rid of this one. Uh, so how do we do that? We're going to start ourselves off with a Guardian of Faith. They are a nice little spirit knight who we can flash out, and when they ETB, we can have all of our other creatures phase out. Now, this could leave us a little open, so we kind of want to hold on to them, specifically for like a field wipe scenario. A little less save everybody, uh, so this isn't going to really stop board wipes per se, except for damage based ones. And only damage based ones if they are red and or black. But I and permanents I control are going to get Hexproof until end of turn, it only cost us a single white to cast. So good way to get around something that's going to target a bunch of things. Um, a great way of um, kind of going for blocks against red or white, or not red or white, <laughs> red or black sources. And like I said before, um, you know, any kind of field wipes that specifically deal damage tend to be in red. I think there might be a couple in black, but this is a way to kind of mitigate it and still save our board. And last, but certainly not least, is the Unbreakable Formation. It's going to give all of our creatures indestructible for three. If we cast it during our main phase, each of them do get pumped up and gain Vigilance. And, because this is going to give all of our creatures indestructible, it works exceedingly well in combination with our board wipes, right? If we play Unbreakable Formation for three, Then, you know, we could pay five and fill the mighty. So, you know, we pick the weakest creature basically on someone's board. It's probably not ours, but like, it's still something. Or even if we wanted to use Time Wipe instead of uh, fill the mighty, you know, we'll bounce the creature back to hand, you know, oh well, it is what it is. They're not gonna get to uh, swing out. But, then we do get to wipe everyone else's board and go ahead and just like, clench that victory. But that's the deck guys, I hope you liked it. Uh, if you want to see more of this deck building content, go ahead and uh, subscribe to the channel. If you don't want to miss any videos that come out, go ahead and ring that little bell to get notifications for whenever I post. Uh, there's a link to join the Discord down in the description below. And until next time, good luck with your builds.